I'd just like to start off with a quick blanket of thank yous. Uh, thank you to the opposition for um, showing up to this tournament, and thank you for the future great clash. Thank you to the judge for showing up and watching us debate today. Um, so let's get everything rocking and rolling. All right, so the resolution reads, this house should initiate diplomatic talks to, the, uh, to end the Russia and Ukraine war. We define this to mean the United States federal government should um, uh, to start immediate, imme mediating peace talks between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, today's round will be a policy round, and this will be uh, determined by net benefits. All right, so this just means that if I bring, if you think that it's 51% better and theirs is 49% better, that's all I need. I just need an ounce of a little bit of a net benefit to win the round. Let's get it rocking and rolling. Disadvantage one. Oh, I apologize. Inherency. Lives are being lost right now in this uh, Russian and Ukraine war. Our B point in our inherency is the Amer America has already gone in fully in this war. C, Ukraine needs us. Firstly, disadvantage one, the United States has already spent a lot of money right now, uh, right now on this war. Seven point, uh, eight point, seven point three billion dollars have been, uh, have been the total cost of this war for the United States alone. B point, NPR says, that the United States is heavily invested in this war. C point, we have given them lots of military weapons. Impact, the United States has spent a lot of money on this war. Disadvantage two, Ukraine right now needs us. A point, right now it feels like the big bully is attacking the little guy. Russia right now is bullying a country that they know that, or they think that they could get. And through the support of countries like the United States and Germany, we have seen that Ukraine has been able to put up a fight. B point, Russia has no right to attack Ukraine. C, we need to stand together to help Ukraine. Impact, Ukraine needs us. Our mandate today will be uh, the United States federal government will help with the negotiations between Ukraine and Russia. Our, infor uh, our agency will be the presidential office. Our funding will be by normal means. Our enforcement will be Congress and the presidential office. And time timeline will be as soon as possible. Advantage one to this, uh, this case. A point, the United States can stop spending so much money on this war. B point, we won't have to be so heavily invested into this war. C point, we can, uh, we can stop having to fund these this war. Impact, the United States can finally start saving money. Disadvantage two, I mean, advantage two is we can help out Ukraine. A point, we can finally end this bully versus not, bully versus the little country. B point, we can stop this, uh, this invasion that Russia has had no right to do. C point, we can stand together to help solve this issue. Advantage three, the war will finally come to an end. A point, right now there's been over 100,000 casualties in this war, and that is according to the New York Times. This is terrible. And we can finally put an end to this war. B point, um, we've seen people that have poured money into this, such as other countries. We would not only just be helping out Ukraine, but we'd also be helping out these other countries. C point, Ukraine right now, uh, I apologize. A C point, according to the New York Times, this war is continually getting worse, not better. Impact, the war will finally end. Advantage four, Ukraine needs us. A point, the Washington Post says, they need us to get a decent peace treaty. B point, NPR says, that they, they need our help before this gets worse. C point, Ukraine needs America. Impact, we can finally help, we can finally help this country and end this war. Advantage five is Americans want this. A point, 73% of Americans think that we should help Ukraine. That's by recruiters.com. B point, this will unite America. 73%, you have Republicans and Democrats. This 
nation that we are a part of is so polarized. But this will finally come together. We have something that both parties agree on. Why shouldn't we act on that? America could, uh, could be united more than it is. C.7% of Americans think that we have done everything, uh, everything that we should do for, uh, for Ukraine. Impact, they need us. Morally, the United States, as one of the bigger countries in the United States, should help Russia. This is what we should do. There is no way around it. If we just allow them to do what is happening, this country will continually fall. One of two. I was wondering what the source and date for the seven percent statistic was. Uh, Pew Research. I apologize. Date. Oh, I don't have the date. I apologize. But right now, we're seeing that Ukraine needs us. Ethically, we should help them. And for, for all these reasons, I urge you to vote in favor of the affirmative. guys again so much for being here judge for judging um, giving us someone to clash with government thank you partner for being here to give me some excellent research again um, so far so good we agree with his terms however we do have clash with all of his points and we're gonna roll right through with that so we're talking about again 51% 49% judge the same thing applies here if you agree with us more we ask you to vote in favor of us but again I have a lot to chew through he gave us a lot of um, fantastic information, and so we want to spend as much time as possible responding to all of this. So, firstly, he has talked about um, lives are being lost. America has already spent money in this war, depending on where you look at it. One poll from us said we spent $8.5 billion. It's from USA.gov. He said closer to $7 billion. Either way, a lot of cash is being spent on this. No one's denying that. And then third, Ukraine needs the United States. Now, before we get any further, I want to make the distinction that while we are debating a policy. We are not excusing the death and destruction that is being caused in Ukraine. And we don't want to seem callous towards that. However, this is a debate round. We are going to debate against this. So if you seem anything otherwise, I promise you we're not. Our hearts go out to those people. However, we simply need to address the policy in the room. So again, I just want that said, Judge, as well. Now, lives are being lost. Let's talk about that first point. Yes, lives are being lost. Any war has casualties. However, what has not been addressed is how with the U.S. or anybody for that matter, U.S. being specifically involved in brokering this peace treaty, which with whom Russia has stated is now an enemy of the state and is against them, and they've landlocked themselves, they've put sanctions against Russia, they have done many things, Fox News, CNN, Russia does not support U.S. and vice versa. If we look at that, their diplomatic relations, U.S. facilitating this would be a poor thing because again, the US has openly and publicly supported Ukraine and they have openly supported condemned Russia. We do not want to repeat, and I don't mean to be extreme or any type of exaggerative, we don't want a, 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 a repeat of when the Germans had finally ended the war, everybody was against them and they get slammed and then we go back into another war. We don't want to repeat that system, one of two, yes sir. Uh, would you not say that having a bigger uh, country such as the US would help Ukraine with their negotiations? Any, again, I was getting to that point. Russia being firmly against the U.S. and the U.S. being firmly with Ukraine would cause an imbalance in this negotiation peace talks that we have, we have looked at. And again, sources that I've seen, CNN, Fox News, Reuters, um, Pew Research, many Russians are against U.S., but they're also against the war. They're against their leadership itself. Russia has infighting right now, and the last thing they need is a known enemy of their own state saying, hey, look, peace talks. And again, what will these peace talks look like? They've, we've already sent, again, depending on what we look like, 7.5 billion, 8.5 billion to Ukraine to help with this war. And again, I don't want to be callous, lives are being lost, but how are we going to work this around? So plan-wise, timeline, ASAP, again, I want wars to stop too. I have no problem necessarily with this wanting to be done as soon as possible. However, we have a problem with the, um, the inf necessarily the enforcement with the presidential office, with the United States as a whole, because again, Talking about kind of some of our points and our voters that we're going to end with here, Judge, is that, hey, look, Ukraine will never surrender. 
they have said this publicly, um, and quote from their you know, uh, prime minister of war, we stand not only for ourselves, the world order as we all know it. They believe that they are in a world fight, that they're setting an example, and they have time and time again, both Belinsky, their, their leader at the time, and also their prime minister, said they will never surrender to Russia, CNN, Fox News, all recent, again, with their emboldening of their stance, they are saying, we're never going to back down from this. And Russia has said the same thing. Russia has said that this is their land. Now, again, to, to, their, to my opposition's point, he said they have no right to fight this war. They have no right to invade Ukraine. But Russia believes they have a right to fight this war. It does not matter what we think. They are the ones fighting the war, and we have to solve it in another way. So, again, again, I just want to reiterate this. No matter what you hear, we are not saying we want this war to happen. But, however, we do have to say, look, Russia... Russia has clearly stated that they are not going to back down either. And yes, it is a bully fight. And yes, it is a terrible war. But this policy is not indicative of what's currently happening. If the U.S. goes in for a peace treaty, this is simply, I, we believe, through both what we're going to be talking about stat-wise and also just policy-wise and kind of the world as we know it, this would further divide Russia and, in, and infuriate them, if you will, embolden them to continue this war, not even double down. Again, 2022 in March, Vladimir Putin has basically did nothing but say short of, quote, we have nuclear capabilities if someone pushes us. Translation is a little rough. He spoke in Russian. But again, that's from CNN.com, March 2022. He is saying, look, we, we're not going to back down. We have nuclear weapons and we know how to use them. That is not, so why would we send someone they do not like to help support the peace? It doesn't make any sense. Thirdly, whoever facilitates, and so look, number one, Ukraine will never surrender. Number two, Russia says it's their land, and again, rights versus rights, it's all perspective. If, if, if Russia saw it from our perspective, they wouldn't have fought this at all to begin with. It doesn't matter what, Russia does not care what the United States thinks or Ukraine thinks, they care what Russia thinks, and Russia's fighting this war. So, Russia says it's their land, right, and to their right, or not to their right, it's not for us to decide, it's for us to help. And thirdly, whoever facilitates these talks is probably already an enemy of Russia, again, Russia has six allies right now, all of them enemies of the United States. And everybody else is an enemy of Russia. So, and even then, depending on what you read and what you look at, they're distancing themselves from Russia to begin with. Russia is becoming more and more isolated, and they will strike, and they have proven that they will strike with nuclear capabilities if possible. Vladimir Putin has all ends out, and Ukraine is also double down saying they will not back down either. So again, solvency-wise, how will the U.S. being involved in these peace treaties, or anybody for this matter, be involved in these peace treaties, help reduce this war, we believe it would further encourage this war. Now again, 2014, NATO has suspended all practical cooperation with Russia and then with, because they were fighting both in Crimea and then Ukraine, that is from NATO.international, that's from 2022, kind of a recent article summarizing everything. But also, look, depending on what you, again, depending on what you read, you know, New York Times, March 2022, March, not November, March, 65% of Americans do not care as much about the Ukraine war as they once did. 70% say we have spent too much money on Ukraine. The United States people are not as interested in the war. The government simply just sends them money, no troops, and Russia has, an, has been a sworn enemy of two of two, sir. All right, Paul, uh, how much um, did you say that, say that we've spent too much money? Um, I believe New York Times 2022, this was an opinion poll, but it was 70% says we have spent too much money on the Ukraine war. That's March 2022. So again, these are not even recent statistics when it's further out and that further cognitive dissonance and not seeing it every day on our feed, if you will. So again, kind of reiterating, Judge, look, while this is a terrible tragedy, we're saying, hey, the U.S. getting involved, that plan wouldn't work. Why? You, Russia has sworn the U.S. as an enemy of their state. Number two, Ukraine has said they will not surrender, and they've been emboldened by both the United States and the world. Again, U.S. is a known and vocal supporter of Russia, of, of Ukraine, who is opposing Russia. And third, Russia claims it's their land. Whether it's right or wrong, it's not for us to decide. So again, with our voters, we believe that this plan will not solve the issue at hand, and you should vote in favor of the opposition. I'm um, just going to do a quick blanket of thank yous and thank all y'all. Still appreciate all of you. Let's get it going.
All right, first things first, I'm gonna go into their attacks and then I'm going to go ahead and then defend uh, my plan. Firstly, um, they said Ukraine won't, won't give up and they also talked about how Russia won't give up. And maybe that's true, but I would like to flip it back to the resolution and our definition. We're gonna go, um, that this house, uh, sh uh, this house should, and we define that to be the United States federal government, uh, initiate diplomatic uh, talks to end the Russian war. So whether they have or not, we should still encourage it. We should still go in and be like, no, 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 you should do peace because peace is feels like it's the only way out of this that's not complete destruction. And I'm not trying to say that they want complete destruction. I don't wanna bring that out in any type of way, but it's the two options. It's either they destroy Ukraine or we try to bring peace we should initiate. It's not that if we will or if we won't, it is that we should, and we should initiate these peace treaties. Um, they talk about how Russia, uh, they talk about how uh, the United States has a open hatred for Russia or uh, openly against Russia. And although that might be true, and they said that it'll tilt towards one side, which frankly we want. We want it to tilt to one side. We want it to tilt to the Ukrainian side. We want Ukraine, this small country that's getting bullied, to have a chance to stand up. So the United States should step in and create and help with the peace treaty. We have seen this through the Washington Post saying they need us in these peace treaties. The NP, uh, NPR saying that uh, they need help, uh, that they need our help, or if not, it'll get worse. So. Maybe, maybe they won't, but we should try to initiate it. Maybe, maybe we are public enemies of Russia, and as well we are, but we should still help out the little guy. Yes, Russia has nuclear abilities, and so does the United States, and so does China, and so does North Korea. It's the way that it is. It, I believe there was a stat, and this is a layman, so I'm just gonna kind of go off the top, but across all the nations we can blow up the world multiple times it is mass destruction on both sides if they decide to nuke the united states the united states would choose to then nuke russia it's destruction on all ends and russia doesn't want that russia has used it as a deterrent to try to keep the united states off of it off of it. and we've seen that the united states has not backed off we have continually given it and russia still has not pushed that button they talked about how NATO has cut ties with Russia and how that's still polarizing the world. And that might be true. And, uh, no, that is true. I apologize. It is true. But that still doesn't prove that we shouldn't help them. We should help Russia. I mean, we should help Ukraine. I apologize. Uh, they talked about how 70% uh, of Americans think that we have spent too much money on uh, this war, which might be true. But that still doesn't negate the fact that 77% 70, uh, 7 of Americans think that we haven't done enough. You can do things by not spending money. We can help this uh, peace treaty. Now, the amount of money that we would spend is the plane trip to get our president over there. So we wouldn't be spending more money. So the 70% would be happy. We can stop spending money on this war if we can negotiate in peace treaties. As well, we should, which is what our uh, resolution has said. We should help Ukraine. We're gonna go into a little bit of defending our case. We talked about our advantage three of that uh, the war should end. We talked about the casualties. Um, and they said that casualties are part of war. It's uh, just, it is what it is. And that's completely true. But that is also why we should stop this war. Casualties will continue to go up if we do not try to help. We can't force them to do it. We can't force both countries and drag their ears to sit down in the middle of a room and be like, do peace. But we can say that we should. The should is really the key part of this definition and this resolution is that the United States should initiate. Whether they do or not, frankly, isn't us to, up to us. Whether we do or not, uh, whether they do or not is out of the United States control. But we should initiate it. We should try our best because this war is creating hundreds of thousands of casualties. And some of these have been to children and civilians. This is not just troop on troop. Ukraine needs our help. 
A bigger country talking to a smaller country will, uh, can persuade the smaller country to do it. Ukraine has said that they won't back down, but that was normally in response to Russia saying that they won't back down. But if the United States can sit down with uh, Ukraine and really lay out these facts, we can possibly persuade them to try to open up, um, or try to open up peace with Russia. Again, I would like to reiterate that it is not if we will sit down with them or if we won't. That would be a fact round. The policy round is if we should. And in fact, and, and a matter of factly, we should and we have to. They need us. We talked about how this could unite Americans. And although maybe, and it was an opinion poll, which opinion polls are valid. I'm not saying that they aren't valid, but they're also kind of skewed. If you have an opinion uh, poll, most people would just be like, ah, oh, whatever, it's fine. Opinion polls are a, it's, they are what they are stat. It shows probably some rep representation, but not the complete representation of the United States of America. You, uh, the United States needs to help Ukraine. We need to stop this big bully that is Russia. That, uh, they talked about how Russia say that it's their land, but the fact of the matter is it's not. China says that Taiwan is theirs, but again, the fact of the matter is it's not. So they can think what they want. I would just say thinking what you want doesn't matter. You can think that you need this land and they invade, but it doesn't mean the world should be like, okay, well, since they think it, like, it should happen. No, absolutely not. What they think does not matter. And that should not um, say that we should or we shouldn't uh, help Ukraine in the uh, not, yeah help Ukraine in these peace negotiations. They do think it's their land, and this is why this war has happened. And it is what it is, and we can't stop what has happened in the past, but we can stop what's happening in the future. Hopefully, we can try our best to uh, open up these peace treaties. Yes, they think it's their land, but possibly we could help Ukraine keep their land. That's the point of peace. And for these reasons, I urge you to vote in favor of the government. Uh, the affirmative. Okay. Okay. someone to clash with. Um, I would like to go over a few points, uh, more of a emotional stance before we go into the nitty gritty of all of this. Um, first of all, I'd like to talk about their uh, first point being lives are being lost. Yes, we have said this is a part of war. And again, we don't want more lives to be lost at the end of the day. Uh, we also got to their second point, which is um, We've already fully gone, we've all gone in fully already. Um, this isn't entirely true. We've not sent our physical troops over there yet. Uh, our third, third main point being that the, uh, they need the US. The Ukraine needs the US. The Ukraine has been doing fine on their own throughout this. They've been pushing Russia back throughout this war. I'd like to get into a few of our, uh, our standpoints throughout this, which we talked about. Uh, the fact that the Ukraine and Russia both don't want this. The Ukraine has stated, uh, their Minister for Foreign Affairs of the Ukraine has stated that we stand not only for ourselves, but the, for the world order as we know it. This is from CBN, CNBC in February 2022. They've also stated that by ending this war, it's the mean, it's the end of their nationhood. And this is from CPA.org of March 2022. <coughs> I'd also like to reiterate our point about NATO. America, uh, the United States is a NATO uh, a participant. NATO in 2014 started to, they suspended all their practical cooperation with Russia due to their aggression against the Ukraine. And this is from NATO.int 2022 July. I feel like this is a good standpoint. Even if the US decided to step in to uh, begin uh, peace negotiations or diplomatic talks with Ukraine and Russia over this war, at the end of the day, Russia's gonna get back down to it. 
They've been doing this since 2014. What's going to stop them after this point to continue it on? Letting these two nations figure it out on their own without the intervention from another country is the way this should go. <clears throat> we talked about the fact that the U uh, that Russia and Ukraine doesn't uh, doesn't want this. I'd like to start talking more about our government's policy case with this. If we decide to initiate diplomatic talks as a U.S. government, it's a waste of money at the end of the day. They said that their funding is of normal means. Of normal means means taxpayer money. We're going to be dishing out more and more money to the Ukraine and Russian war by going through this. We've already spent $8.5 billion to the Ukraine. So now we're going to pay even more towards this war? That, is, that has nothing to do with the United States. Uh, it's a fact that the uh, Ukraine is not a part of NATO. Uh, and there's no reason for the U.S. to further intervene with these two countries. Uh, I would like to also go off of their uh, timeline of ASAP as soon as possible. This doesn't theoretically make sense. We can say we can handle this tomorrow, but at the end of the day, they have not given us an actual timeline of how this would progress through the, uh, the presidential office. Um, and any type of, pro of, of diplomatic talks with other countries does not go through the presidential office. It goes through other means before landing on the president's desk. That's how our government works in general. Um, and again, I would like to reiterate their funding. This is taxpayers' money. Some of their advantages was that this would stop spending money. We would stop spending money on this, but we wouldn't. We'd be shoveling more and more money into this. We've seen this with other countries that we have intervened with. That even after we step out of the war, we're still dishing out money to them. So when would we cut off the uh, the theoretical umbilical cord? Uh, one of their other advantages was that we were already heavily invested in this and we would be able to pull out. Again, we become more invested with it for a longer period of time because we're going to be continually into their business because then we'll see the Ukraine as uh, a secondary country like we have with other countries we've intervened with in wars. Again, another advantage was that this would be helping the Ukraine. The Ukraine, again, has been doing fine on their own fighting back Russia throughout this war. I'll take one of you two questions. Uh, would you not say the company, uh, that different uh, first world countries have helped Ukraine since the beginning of the war? I'm sorry, could you restate that? Um, would you not say that uh, countries have helped you, uh, Ukraine since the beginning of the war, such as the United States and Germany? Yes, other countries have helped Ukraine throughout this war. And again, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the US initiating diplomatic talks with Ukraine and Russia, not what's happened throughout the war. This is, again, a continuation of the impacts taxpayers' money by doing this. Um, one of their impacts that the government has brought up, again, that this would save money. Again, I would like to refute this with the fact that their funding mm -hmm. is the taxpayer money and we will be dishing out even more money. So where are we saving the money? end up spending more money. I'd like to end this with our few of our voters, and that again is being that both Russia and Ukraine don't want this. They don't want peace talks. They want to continue this out, and they've both made that abundantly clear that they do not want peace talks. So what is the point of the U.S. stepping in? The only point of the U.S. stepping in is for us to waste more taxpayer money on yelling into the wind saying, hey, you guys should stop this. If they don't want it, there's no point of us stepping in and wasting that money. Um, I would also, uh, another one of our voters is the fact that their funding would be of normal means, meaning taxpayer money. I would also like to refute the fact that their timeline doesn't make any sense, ASAP. We can't do this today, we can't do this tomorrow. There are steps and processes that have to go, that take place, and they haven't given us a timeline for those steps and processes. I'd also like to go, uh, to refute the fact that their enforcement would be the presidential office. Again, 
they have not stated the steps to get to that office, that standpoint, the president can't just be like, okay, we're gonna start diplomatic talks today. At the end of the day, I don't believe this would be a net benefit towards the United States of America. Again, we'd be wasting money in these arguments and these um, the talking points. I'd also like to bring up the fact again that my partner brought up, said that 70% say we've spent too much uh, money on the Ukraine war, and this is March 2022, and 65% says that they don't care as much. Again, this is from 2022. This is more current data points than the government has given with their 71% stats saying that we have not done everything from 2021, or their mysterious 7% um, of doing everything we can do, but they've not given us a date for that one. Uh, so again, I believe with our data point saying that America's, Americans really don't want this, and Americans believe we have spent too much money already, why would we throw more money at this? Thank you. Again, thank you guys so much, Blanket of Pleasantries. I only have four minutes, so I'm just gonna jump right in. I hope you don't mind the curtain is here. However, we do wanna reiterate our points, our voters to you, Judge. We wanna kind of make sure that we understand where we're all going here at the end, and then we're gonna hear what our opposition has to say as our closing. So first, Ukraine will never surrender and have been emboldened by both U.S. involvement and other first world countries funding as well. Number two, Russia says it is their land, it is their right. And again, number three, Whoever facilitates these talks, unless it is one of six countries that are also opposition to the United States and to most first world countries, um, is an enemy of Russia. Now, let's break this down. And again, I have a couple of points I want to really reiterate and hammer home to you, Judge, as we're deciding, is this the net benefit? Is this the greater good for both Russia, Ukraine, United States? Because this is a United States policy. We'll make sure it's also a net benefit to United States policy. And if it isn't, you'll vote in our favor. So again, we have clearly stated and it's not been entirely clashed that with U.S. involvement in these peace treaties, in the beginning of the talks to end the Russia-Ukraine war, which is what we've been talking about the entire time, U.S. further involvement would make things worse, which is not better for Ukraine, which is not better for the United States, and is not better for Russia. Again, lives are being lost. Judge, we cannot argue against that. I love. I know what his. I, I understand what our opposition was saying. But I can't come up here and say lives are not being lost, so it's not something I can necessarily defend. Lives are being lost. We're talking about net benefit here. What would be greater? Russia being enraged, nuclear bomb, or the war settling out on its own? What's the net benefit? I don't want to be one of those cynical guys. However, we are saying net benefit. We have chosen this case. We're saying, hey, look, what's the greater good here? What would be better for these countries? And we believe staying out of it would is specifically through both what the policy has been said, hey, look, U.S. specifically, which is what he has chosen, it would cause a negative effect. And again, do we want to stop war? Yes. I'm not afraid to admit it. I don't like war. However, the U.S. involvement will not make it better. Our statistics that we've listed, both American opinion and also money that we've spent and sent, the lack of timing and precision on this plan that would need timing and precision it would not cause that benefit. It would be a detriment to both Ukraine, Russia, and the United States. So again, kind of repeating our voters and kind of that last talk. Judge, don't let him say anything differently here. The U.S., and it has not been entirely classed, the U.S. specifically, which is what he has chosen, would not make it better for either country. A known ally of Ukraine, a known enemy of Russia, a not neutral third party that Russia would feel comfortable enough settling with. They are both proud countries. We've already established this. This war has gone on and rivalry has gone on in modern day since 2014. My, that's not new information. My partner's already mentioned that previously. Again, whether it's through Ukraine losing, whether it's through Russia losing the war, whether it's through a stalemate, those are all better than any type of nuclear war. And we believe that this would lean towards that and Russia has all but stated that with their leadership. So again, Judge, we're talking about benefits in here. United States being involved in peace treaties and peace talks initiating that would not cause that greater good, would not cause that benefit. And for those reasons and our voters, the stats and polls and the ideas that we've given you, we think you should vote in favor of the opposition.
everyone ready? Sure. All right, absolutely. Let's just end with a quick uh, blanket of thank yous. Thank you for the opposition, for showing such great class and showmanship all around. Thank you for the judge for taking the time out of his day to come here and listen to us debate. All right, let's get right into my voters. All right, my voters, I'm going to go over one, net benefits, two, a resolutionary and definition analysis, and then two, we're going to do a two-world analysis. So firstly, net benefits. If you believe that my case brings absolutely any net benefit to the world or the United States, I win. Um, it, and that's how net benefits goes. Secondly, let's look at a resolutionary and definitionary analysis. Resolution reads that this house should initiate diplomatic talks to end the Russia and Ukraine war. We define this to mean the United States federal government should start and mediate peace talks between Russia and Ukraine. So we can see this throughout our whole case of how we brought net benefits. We've seen that Ukraine needs us. We've seen that the United States has spent so much money on funding these wars. We've seen that lives have been lost. We have, we have seen that, you know, uh, that Americans want this. We've seen that Ukraine is being bullied by Russia. And by us stepping in, we can help fight that bully. We have seen that the United States has spent so much money on this. And if we can get this war to end, we can finally stop spending money on this war. And secondly, let's do... Um, and so we can really see the net benefits flow through this. The United States does not need net benefits. The world needs net benefits. Net benefits should go to everyone. Net benefits is just you're bringing good into the world. And my plan does that. Two, we could do a, a two-world analysis. Firstly, the opposition. If we continue and we do not start or at least attempt to start um, peace talks, we continue seeing this war the way that it's going to go. Annihilation. That's the only way around this. If we don't in initiate peace talks, annihilation is the only way out. Secondly, if you go to our plan, one that we at least try when you look at the resolution, is this house, uh, this house should. And we define this to mean the United States federal government should. As I brought up in my second speech, it doesn't matter if they do or don't. I don't have to prove that they do, that they will or won't. I just have to prove that the United States federal government should help. And if you look at our case, we can see that if we do help, if we do step in, we bring net benefits. We bring that the United States will save money. We'll see that Ukraine will stop being bullied by Russia. We'll see a world where this, the, the war will end. And then we can, stop, uh, we can stop losing lives to this war. We can finally help a country who desperately needs us. We had points from the Washington Post saying they need us in these peace talks. We saw a point through NPR that we need to help before this war gets even worse than it already is. Frankly, Ukraine needs us. The world needs us to help out. And for these reasons, I urge you to vote in favor of the affirmative. Hold on. Y'all comfortable with handshakes? <laughs>